Universe. Section 3. Size, Age, Contents, Structure, and Laws. The universe is immensely large and possibly infinite in volume. The region visible from Earth, or the observable universe, is a sphere with a radius of about 46 billion light-years, based on where the expansion of space has taken the most distant objects observed. For comparison, the diameter of a typical galaxy is only 30,000 light-years, and the typical distance between two neighboring galaxies is only 3 million light-years. As an example, our Milky Way galaxy is roughly 100,000 light-years in diameter, and our nearest sister galaxy, the Andromeda galaxy, is located roughly 2.5 million light-years away. There are probably more than 100 billion galaxies in the observable universe. Typical galaxies range from dwarfs, with as few as 10 million stars, up to giants, with 1 trillion stars, all orbiting the galaxy's center of mass. A 2010 study by astronomers estimated that the observable universe contains 300 sextillion, or 3 times 10 to the 23rd power, stars. The observable matter is spread homogeneously, or uniformly, throughout the universe when averaged over distances longer than 300 million light-years. However, on smaller length scales, matter is observed to form clumps, i.e., to cluster hierarchically. Many atoms are condensed into stars, most stars into galaxies, most galaxies into clusters, superclusters, and finally, the largest scale structures, such as the Great Wall of Galaxies. The observable matter of the universe is also spread isotropically, meaning that no direction of observation seems different from any other. Each region of the sky has roughly the same content. The universe is also bathed in a highly isotropic microwave radiation. The hypothesis that the large-scale universe is homogeneous and isotropic is known as the cosmological principle, which is supported by astronomical observations. The present overall density of the universe is very low, roughly 9.9 .9 times 10 to the negative 30 power grams per cubic centimeter. This mass hyphen energy appears to consist of 73% dark energy, 23% cold dark matter, and 4% ordinary matter. Thus, the density of atoms is on the order of a single hydrogen atom for every 4 cubic meters of volume. The properties of dark energy and dark matter are largely unknown. Dark matter gravitates as ordinary matter, and thus works to slow down the expansion of the universe. By contrast, dark energy accelerates its expansion. The most precise estimate of the universe's age is 3.73 billion years old, based on observations of the cosmic microwave background radiation. Independent estimates, based on measurements such as radioactive dating, agree at 13 to 15 billion years. The universe has not been the same at all times in its history. For example, the relative populations of quasars and galaxies have changed and 
space itself appears to have expanded. This expansion accounts for how Earth-bound scientists can observe the light from a galaxy 30 billion light years away, even if that light has traveled for only 13 billion years. The very space between them has expanded. This expansion is consistent with the observation that the light from distant galaxies has been red-shifted. The photons emitted have been stretched to longer wavelengths and lower frequency during their journey. The rate of this spatial expansion is accelerating based on studies of Type 1A supernovae and corroborated by other data. The relative fractions of different chemical elements, particularly the lightest atoms such as hydrogen, deuterium, and helium, seem to be identical throughout the universe and throughout its observable history. The universe seems to have much more matter than antimatter, an asymmetry possibly related to the observations of CP violation. The universe appears to have no net electric charge, and therefore, gravity appears to be the dominant interaction on cosmological length scales. The universe also appears to have neither net momentum nor angular momentum. The absence of net charge and momentum would follow from accepted physical law if the universe were finite. The universe appears to have a smooth space-time continuum, consisting of three spatial dimensions and one temporal or time dimension. On the average, space is observed to be nearly flat, close to a zero curvature, meaning that Euclidean geometry is experimentally true with high accuracy throughout most of the universe. Space-time also appears to have a simply connected topology, at least on the length scale of the observable universe. However, present observations cannot exclude the possibilities that the universe has more dimensions and that its space-time may have a multiply connected global topology, in analogy with the cylindrical or toroidal topologies of two-dimensional spaces. The universe appears to behave in a manner that regularly follows a set of physical laws and physical constants. According to the prevailing standard model of physics, all matter is composed of three generations of leptons and quarks, both of which are fermions. These elementary particles interact via, at most, three fundamental interactions. The electroweak interaction, which includes electromagnetism and the weak nuclear force. The strong nuclear force, described by quantum chromodynamics. And gravity, which is best described at present by general relativity. The first two interactions can be described by renormalized quantum field theory and are mediated by gauge bosons that correspond to a particular type of gauge symmetry. A renormalized quantum field theory of general relativity has not been yet achieved, although various forms of string theory seem promising. The theory of special relativity is believed to hold throughout the universe, provided that the spatial and temporal length scales are sufficiently short. Otherwise, the more general theory of general relativity must be applied. There is no explanation for the particular values that physical constants appear to have throughout our universe, such as Planck's constant, H or the gravitational constant, g. Several conservation laws have been identified, such as the conservation of charge, momentum, 
angular momentum, and energy. In many cases, these conservation laws can be related to symmetries or mathematical identities. Fine tuning. It appears that many of the properties of the universe have special values in the sense that a universe where these properties only differ slightly would not be able to support intelligent life. Not all scientists agree that this fine-tuning exists. In particular, it is not known under what conditions intelligent life could form and what form or shape that would take. A relevant observation in this discussion is that, for an observer to exist to observe fine-tuning, the universe must be able to support intelligent life. As such, the conditional probability of observing a universe that is fine-tuned to support intelligent life is 1. This observation is known as the anthropic principle, and is particularly relevant if the creation of the universe was probabilistic, or if multiple universes with a variety of properties exist. Section 4 Historical Models Many models of the universe, or cosmologies, and its origin or cosmologies, have been proposed based on the then-available data and conceptions of the universe. Historically, cosmologies and cosmologies were based on narratives of gods acting in various ways. Theories of an impersonal universe governed by physical laws were first proposed by the Greeks and Indians. Over the centuries, improvements in astronomical observations and theories of motion and gravitation led to ever more accurate descriptions of the universe. The modern era of cosmology began with Albert Einstein's 1915 General Theory of Relativity, which made it possible to quantitatively predict the origin, evolution, and conclusion of the universe as a whole. Most modern accepted theories of cosmology are based on general relativity and, more specifically, the predicted Big Bang. However, still more careful measurements are required to determine which theory is correct. Creation Many cultures have stories describing the origin of the world, which may be roughly grouped into common types. In one type of story, the world is born from a world egg. Such stories include the Finnish epic poem Kalevala, the Chinese story of Pangu, or the Indian Brahmanda Purana. In related stories, the creation idea is caused by a single entity emanating or producing something by him or herself, as in the Tibetan Buddhism concept of Adi Buddha, the ancient Greek story of Gaia, Mother Earth, the Aztec goddess Koatlikyu myth, the ancient Egyptian god Atum story, or the Genesis creation narrative. In another type of story, the world is created from the union of male and female deities, as in the Maori story of Ranji and Papa. In other stories, the universe is created by crafting it from pre-existing materials, such as the corpse of a dead god, as from Tiamat in the Babylonian epic Enuma Elish, or from the giant Ymir in Norse mythology, or from chaotic materials as in Izanagi and Izanami 
in Japanese mythology. In other stories, the universe emanates from fundamental principles such as Brahman and Prakriti, Prakriti, or the yin and yang of the Tao. Philosophical Models From the 6th century before the Common Era, the pre-Socratic Greek philosophers developed the earliest known philosophical models of the universe. The earliest Greek philosophers noted that appearances can be deceiving and sought to understand the underlying reality behind the appearances. In particular, they noted the ability of matter to change forms. For example, ice to water to steam. And several philosophers proposed that all the apparently different materials of the world are different forms of a single primordial material. The first to do so was Thales, who proposed this material is water. Thales' student, Anaximander, proposed that everything came from the limitless Apira. Anaximenus proposed air on account of its perceived attractive and repulsive qualities that cause the single primordial material to condense or dissociate into different forms. Anaxagoras proposed the principle of new. Heraclitus proposed fire. Empedocles proposed the elements, earth, water, air, and fire. His four-element theory became very popular. Like Pythagoras, Plato believed that all things were composed of number, with the Empedocles elements taking the form of the platonic solids. Democritus, and later philosophers, most notably Lepikos, proposed that the universe was composed of indivisible atoms moving through a void or a vacuum. Aristotle did not believe that was feasible because air, like water, offers resistance to motion. Air will immediately rush in to fill a void and, moreover, without resistance, it would do so indefinitely fast. Although Heraclitus argued for eternal change, his quasi-contemporary Parmenides made the radical suggestion that all change is an illusion, that the true underlying reality is eternally unchanging and of a single nature. Parmenides denoted this reality as the One. Parmenides' theory seemed implausible to many Greeks, but his student, Zeno of Elea, challenged him with several famous paradoxes. Aristotle responded to these paradoxes by developing the notion of a potential countable infinity, as well as the infinitely divisible continuum. Unlike the eternal and unchanging cycles of time, he believed the world was bounded by the celestial spheres, and thus magnitude was only finitely multiplicative. The Indian philosopher Kamada, founder of the Vaisheshika school, developed the theory of atomism and proposed that light and heat were varieties of the same substance. In the fifth century of the Common Era, the Buddhist atomist philosopher Dignaga proposed atoms to be point-sized, durationless, and made of energy. They denied the existence of substantial matter and proposed that movement consisted of momentary flashes of a stream of energy. The theory of temporal finitism was inspired by the doctrine of creation shared by the three Abrahamic religions, Judaism.
Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. The Christian philosopher John Philopoulos presented the philosophical arguments against the ancient Greek notion of an infinite past and future. The arguments of Philopoulos against an infinite past were used by the early Muslim philosopher Al-Kindi, the Jewish philosopher Sadia Gaon, and the Muslim theologian Al-Ghazali. Borrowing from Aristotle's physics and metaphysics, they employed two logical arguments against an infinite past, the first being the, quote, argument from the impossibility of the existence of an actual infinite, end quote, which states, quote, an infinite temporal regress of events cannot exist, end quote. The second argument, the, quote, argument from the impossibility of completing an actual infinite by successive addition, end quote, states, an actual infinite cannot be completed by successive addition, end quote, quote, the temporal series of past events cannot be an actual infinite, end quote. Both arguments were adopted by Christian philosophers and theologians, and the second argument in particular became more famous after it was adopted by Immanuel Kant in his thesis of the first antinomy concerning time.